Hello again. Uh, we're going to be moving on to the next two dungeons in our Let's Play series, which is going to be the Old Forest and the Maze. These are Tier 2 dungeons, which means they're going to be significantly harder than the lower level dungeons we've been clearing through, and all of the enemies are going to be about the same level as my character up until we finish the Tier 2 dungeons. It's really hard to outlevel these, unlike the, uh, the Level 1 uh, newbie dungeons. So we're going to get started, we're going to load our character back up, and we're going to get back into the game. Now, some of you may have skipped my last video, as it was intended for newbies only, and you might notice I'm a couple level high, levels higher, and I might have one or two different items, but otherwise it's going to be pretty much the same if you're watching seamlessly from part two to part three. And since I didn't spend any class points or talent points during that uh, last video, I'm going to take care of that now. We're going to get our strength up until it grays out, and then we're going to put the rest into constitution like we've been doing. And now it looks like we had some new abilities open up. We have Assault, which is the top tier ability, and the Shield Offense Tree. And much like Overpower, there's not really much point in putting more than one point into it for now. And we've also recently, at uh, level 8, opened up Shield Expertise. And we're just going to max this out as quickly as we can, because it's a very nice ability to have, and it ups our Shield Block Damage. On the generic side of things, we're going to level up Thick Skin until we can't put any more points into it. We want to max this out as quickly as possible because it's a 15% boost when it's completely maxed to everything, uh, to your resistances to everything. And we're going to put one more point to combat accuracy because we don't want to miss any of our shield attacks. We have a category point now, and we got that at level 10, and this category point can be spent to unlock any of these locked talent trees. And they're all potentially pretty good. But I don't know if I'm going to be using it right away for a new talent tree, because we have things to spend the points on right now. Instead, what I can do is spend that category point to buy a new rune or infusion slot, which will let me have four instead of three. And that's probably what I'm going to do with my first category point, and it's usually what I do on any new character. Real quick, I'm going to check the progress on our alchemy quests. We have two alchemy quests, one for the elf town of Elvala and one for a Grimly the Hermit, and we've only found one of six items that we need, so we're just going to keep going and waiting until we can get the rest of those parts. They usually come around near the end of the tier two dungeons, so we're not going to really worry about them for a while. They'll just fill out on their own. The next dungeon is south of the uh, town of Dearth, and this is the Old Forest, and it's a four-level dungeon that connects to another dungeon we're probably going to put off for a while because it's significantly harder than these uh, early Tier 2 dungeons. The enemies in Old Forest are mostly vermin and animals, kind of like Norgos's Lair, but it can also have some potentially dangerous high-level enemies, and at this point, rare enemies also become very dangerous. Because rare enemies scale like player characters, they tend to scale kind of out of control once they get past about level 10. And some of them can be really, really strong and potentially one-shot my character, or two-shot my character, so I have to be very careful here. The enemies we're fighting here mostly are just bears and other animals, so they can be easily killed like they could in the other dungeons. We have a new type of enemy here, which is a Trent. They're a type of plant. They're not very tough, unless you can run into them as rare as uniques, and then they tend to be a little bit harder. Here's a honey tree. It looks like we have one of these is required for our alchemy quest, so it's good that we're finding that here. Okay, we have another vault here, and this is a rogue statement, it'll be full of rogue type enemies. Okay, 
It then opens, ends with this treasure room, and as you can see, there's a few gems back here that we can't get to. The way to get to those is you dig right in the center, and it will cut a hole into the back of the vault, and you'll be able to get the gems that are in that portion of the vault. Didn't really get any loot on this version, or on this first map. Okay, we have another escort quest. This is a temporal explorer. And it turns out that it's actually my character if my character was a woman in a green dress with blonde hair. So, <laughs> needless to say, we're going to betray them to the ziggurat and let them die. Up ahead of us, we have a cursed wolf, by the looks of it. And they have given me the fear tree, which might make me lash out at my escort. So we're going to want to get away from our escort as quickly as possible. Most of the items that rare enemies drop will often turn out to be pretty bad. Some of them are better for casters, some of them are really nice early on. And very, very rarely you'll find something that's amazing in the end game, but uh, the, the array of stats on them is, is narrow, and most of the items kind of have gimmicky themes. So finding a good rare item takes quite a bit of luck. Looks like this rare is another bulwark, so they're not too much of a threat to us. So that shield reflect will do a lot more damage later on. We found two rare lights. Now both of these are actually really nice. This one gives 20% nature resistance penetration, which we don't use, but if we were playing a nature damage focused character, this would be an incredible item to use for most of the game. And this other one gives 20 damage reflect when you get hit, and allows you to breathe in water. And I'm actually going to keep that, because water breathing in a slot like the, the, the light slot is really useful, because it doesn't really have much of a stat value to it. And I lost track of my escort. There she is. My escort keeps hitting me with her spells. This really makes the, the moral implications of betraying her to the witch hunters not so hard to deal with, I think. Now she offers solipsist abilities, which might be useful if you're playing a Mind Slayer or other heavily willpower based character. And the sleep effect is a really nice CC, but unfortunately it's not really going to do me much good. It only puts one target to sleep. Wait, no, radius of one. Okay, that's a little bit better. It could potentially put a few targets to sleep. But only for three turns. I don't know if I want to take that. Of course, she's not really offering me anything better, so I will take that CC ability, and it might come in handy later on. So we just leveled up again, and because the level is a multi multiplicable by 15, we get, or by 5, we get 2 class points and no generic points this level. And we're going to put those into shield expertise, which will increase our spell and physical saves and increase our damage with shield attacks even more. We'll continue to raise our constitution. Our health is getting to really high numbers now. Okay, this is another vault. There's four honey trees in this vault, and it summons a group of bears and bees. You can run into these as early as full night, and they can be pretty dangerous if you go in unprepared. At this level, with the way my character is set up, none, none, none of these are going to do any significant damage to me, so I'm not really worried about it. But you can easily lose a character in Trollmire if you stumble around this level. It's kind of big Okay, we 
have another rogue's den here. We didn't get much here in terms of drops. Another healing infusion, though I'm not really going to make get much use out of that. Okay. Another escort, and like the other ones, we're going to betray this one as well. If we run into another seer later on, we'll probably just take the uh, normal reward. But there's at least three more dungeons that will have escorts in them, and I don't want to risk missing out on something much more valuable, so... Most Arcanist rewards tend to require the magic or the cunning stat, and because I'm pumping neither of those stats, those rewards aren't going to be so useful to me. to Earth's eyes. I don't think I've ever... Oh, that's pretty nice. It reveals a significant portion of the map around me. It's not something I'm going to use frequently because I don't currently have any way of dumping my equilibrium stat. But it could be a nice tool to use as I progress through the dungeons. Especially some of the later ones. Sometimes you'll run into dungeon... to vaults in Dreadfell and other dungeons that take up most of the map. And in those cases, you really want to have some way to reveal extra areas so you can see what walls can be broken through and what the layout of the vault is going to be to prepare for any kind of threats that might be lurking. So I'm going to keep this amulet because it's nice to have something with an extra source of stun resistance and lightning resistance on it for a later dungeon. And whenever you find something like this, with this much lightning resistance on it at this level, anything with grounding on it or rings of lightning, you should hold on to them, because there's a dungeon later on where lightning resistance is incredibly useful, and we'll probably get to that in another video or two. Now we're coming onto the last map of Old Forest, and this one's where the boss is located. Unlike the other dungeons we've done so far, there is no dedicated boss room on this map. The boss can spawn anywhere. Okay. Not sure what this white worm mass is offhand. But wow, am I taking a lot of damage from it. And here's the boss. Wrathroot is a Trent. He's got quite a lot of hit points, and he's actually higher level than me by five levels, so he scaled considerably more than the dungeons, or than the bosses in the other dungeons that we've done so far have done. He has cold damage attacks and cold damage auras, and he takes extra damage from fire attacks, which we don't really have any of. Normally you'd want to pull him into a corridor, but because our armor is so good, these enemies really can't do any damage to me. Only a couple of points here and there, and my regeneration for my regeneration fusion well, well out, out does that, so I'm not really worried about what damage I'm going to be taking here. We'll hold on to this for now. 
but it's not a very good item for me. Humans get a bonus when they wear vestments of the Conclave, and there's certain items in the game that do give bonuses based on race. There's a couple of items that will do the same thing for dwarf characters, and hopefully I'll find one or two of them so I can show you later on. These items usually tend to be abysmal for uh, characters who aren't of the same race to wear them, but they tend to be rarer items to compensate for the fact that only limited character races can use them. Okay, there's another dungeon over here, and, you know, as a matter of fact, I think we'll be fine. This is the Lake of Noor, and normally you want to wait two or three more levels to do this and complete some of the other dungeons, but we found some really good gear. I think we're more than capable of handling this next dungeon, though it is very dangerous and we may die. I don't want any of the items we found in the last map, so I'm just going to get rid of them. We're going to put on that amulet of the fish we found, since that'll let us breathe underwater. We want the extra light radius in the next dungeon, though, so we're not going to use the light, the water-breathing light source that we found earlier. The first floor of Lake of Nur is a completely aquatic dungeon, and if you don't have a source of water breathing, you only have 100 units of air, and a, a couple of them will drain off every step you make and every time you wait. And you can regain water, or you can regain air by stepping in air bubbles. And you can wait around a few turns before the air bubbles will disperse. Striking stance. We have a brawler squid. He specializes in unarmed attacks, which I guess is fitting for a squid. Brawler enemies can be really hard to hit, but their damage output tends to be kind of low, especially with animals, because animals typically don't equip weapons. In most enemies, you typically don't equip gloves, which is the primary damage source for brawler characters. But at much higher levels, they can actually be pretty threatening just by sheer output of attacks. They're also very, very difficult enemies to get a beat on. Okay, we have a Sun Paladin Water Imp here. They do positive energy damage or light damage. They tend to have healing abilities and very high saving throws and armor. They're kind of like bulwarks, but with magic abilities instead of all physical. We're just going to explore through the rest of the zone. Okay, and the next floor, this is also a pretty good rare, though we're not going to use it because our current chest piece is amazing. This next floor doesn't require the water breathing because it's sealed off in its own air bubble. And right after I get off the steps, there's a blade horror waiting for me. Most of the enemies in Lake of Nor's third floor are horror type enemies. They're eldritch horrors, kind of Lovecraftian, and they tend to be really hard to kill or have really damaging abilities. Blade horrors are really bad if you're not a physical resistance class, like a bulwark, because they can do a lot of damage very quickly. But almost all of the damage that they do is physical, so it's going to be pretty easy to deal with these for my character. They also tend to have very low HP, and that's true of most horrors. These are devourers. They always spawn in packs of three, and they also do mostly physical damage. They have an interesting thing where they will do everything in their power to surround you, including jump over your character. As you can see, it just happened right there. Hmm. 
Bloated Horrors are ranged casters. They do all darkness damage. They're not really difficult on their own, but in a group they can do a lot of damage, and they can also mess you up pretty badly if you're surrounded by enemies already. They also tend to teleport away when they're low on health, but they're stationary once they're in place, so they're not going to chase you down a corridor or something. Umbral Horrors have an elite rank, so they're a little bit tougher than normal uh, enemies, and any enemy with an elite rank will be a little bit tougher than normal. They also tend to be a bit rarer. You usually won't run into one of these, or you'll only run into one elite floor, so... These aren't terribly hard. The other elite horrors are actually much much harder, but they do summon these shadows that can actually be pretty damaging, especially if they have caster abilities. Oozing horror nearby, and these are an interesting enemy type. We'll wait till he comes to us because I don't want to have to chase an enemy that's bolting us down the hallway. Oozing horrors are slow moving ooze horror enemies. They have a big group or a big blob of acid damage or blight damage that surrounds them at all times. It gets increasingly worse the longer you stand in it. They also tend to run away when they're low on health, and they have horrible, horrible silence auras, so if you're a spellcaster, you want to stay as far away from these as possible, or you're going to have a really bad time. One thing I recommend when you do this for the first time, if you're not confident that you can kill these enemies when you run into them, just run to the next floor. Don't worry about clearing this floor, because Lake of Nur claims more characters than most any other dungeon, just because some of the enemies that can spawn here are really nasty to deal with if you're unprepared. Looks like we have possibly a rogue snake here. Now we've explored the entire floor, we're going to go to the last floor of Lake of Nur, where the boss is located. Now this is an interesting item, and you won't find these very often. It's a tentacled ash totem of cure poison. Tentacle on a item that goes in the totem slot means it gives you an ability called Invoke Tentacle, which will let you summon a friendly tentacle to serve you. Anything it kills won't grant experience. But the power level of these tentacles is absolutely insane, and if you can find one of these really early in the game, it will carry you probably until Dreadfell or beyond. So I'm going to keep that just in case, and I'll actually show you what it, or how it works on this next boss, because he's kind of a pain and he's really not worth nearly enough experience for how difficult he is. The Weirdling Beast is unique, so he's not actually a full boss, which is why he doesn't get very good experience. He has the ability of cursed enemies as well as corruptors. He has poison damage attacks. He can be pretty nasty. He can also deactivate your sustained abilities. So if you're playing a class that's heavily reliant on sustains, he can be a very difficult encounter. He also has confuse effects, so you generally want to come in here with a high mental save if possible. So we're going to put on this tentacled ash totem, and we're going to wait three turns. Wow, he's hitting me really hard. I'm going to activate my shield wall sustain. I'm not sure what these are, I've never been able to figure it out because they never go away. I think it's like a damage area, if you step in it or if you stay in it you take damage every round, I think. So let's invoke this tentacle and see what it does. This is Gurgulk's Tentacle. It's an Eldritch Horror, level 20, and it has pretty much a 100% chance to hit no matter what it does. It also hits like a truck. Alright, 
so we got that boss down. He didn't really drop anything, because it's because it's he's a unique. Unique enemies don't always drop items that are any good. And now we're in the center of a pretty big area called Yokgar the Share Tool Fortress. I don't want to go into too many details in this video about what exactly its purpose is. It will become important in the main story later on. But once you've gotten this area cleared, you get access to an interesting thing. It's a library back here. And when you click on it, it will show you all the lore you've collected across all of your characters, which can be pretty handy. You also get the option to insert your Rod of Recall that you found earlier in the game into this control orb. And when you do that, an NPC who's friendly will spawn in the room called the Fortress Shadow. You can go and talk to him, and he has some dialogue options, and I will leave these to you, or I'll explain them later on, because I still extend for these first videos to be intended for newbies, at least until we get to Dreadfell. And um, once you've completed this, and once you've gotten all of his dialogue options taken care of, he's going to give you an item called the Transmogrification Chest. And you'll have this on every new character you make automatically from this point on. So you want to do this as soon as you can, within reason. It's not worth throwing away a character over, but once you're at a safe level and you know you can take on this challenge, it's really recommended you go out here and get this. The Transmogrification Chest will automatically pick up every item you find in a dungeon, and it will give you a prompt at the end of each floor asking you if you want to get rid of those items or if you want to keep them for yourself. Anything that you decide not to keep for yourself gets transformed into gold. Then, after you come back to the Share Tool Fortress on a new character, Every item you find after that is also converted in part to fortress power, which you can use later on to summon sort of on-demand dungeons. So now that we've completed this instance, our next dungeon is going to be the maze, but we're going to put that off until the next video for right now since we've already fit two in here. Thanks for watching.